hey, hey you, just wanna let you know, you're not responsible for anyone else's feelings. You're not responsible for anyone else's emotions. You're not responsible for how anybody reacts to you when you express your truth, when you express your needs, when you express how you feel. You're not responsible for how they react to you. We're gonna dive into where that comes from. I'm gonna share a little story about my own personal experience with that right after this. Don't go nowhere. All right, welcome back. I'm Tony Fonte and I help people heal so they can come back home to who they truly are and manifest a life that is exciting and fun by being themselves. Boom. All right, so we're gonna dive deep into the, the message of you're not responsible for how other people feel and how they react to you. You're not responsible for their emotions. We're gonna dive into where it comes from. And then I'm gonna share with you my own personal story of an awareness I just had, but it, it stems back to childhood. And that's really where it boils down to. It goes back to childhood. It goes back to childhood and you keeping a peace. It's a people pleasing mechanism, defense mechanism to keep the peace because it, you don't want to re have people to react to you a certain way because something happened as a kid and, and a parent, either mom or dad or both, reacted to you in a negative way when you expressed how you felt, when you were being you, when you were doing anything. They reacted in a way so to keep the peace, you took on responsibility for their emotions. You took responsibility for how they reacted. And it was like you were walking on eggshells around these people. And now you've gone throughout your life and your relationships and your friendships. Probably some relationships are more prone to it than others. I've seen that with my own life. There's some people that I can easily share how I feel. And there's other people that it's harder for me to share, especially in intimate relationships. It's always harder for me to share and express how I felt, express my needs, express when I was upset, express when I felt something from my partner that there was something not being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not met, but maybe met or something that was, was triggered and not sharing the trigger, even though that triggers my own responsibility. I was, I was taking responsibility how they react. Well, I don't want to say it this way. I don't want to express this because they may get upset and they may leave. They may take love away. They may take validation away. They may take approval away. And it all goes back to the, the inner child who wasn't their needs weren't met. They weren't seen and heard as a child. And I'm going to give a personal experience with this. So I guess I said with, with an intimate partner, so I was in a, in a relationship when we were talking and she said to me, you know, it, it's, it's like you're, you're, you walk on eggshells with me. And at first I was like, no, I don't think that's where I'm at. I'm pretty easy at expressing expressing. So I thought I was easy expressing how I felt and some things, but it really wasn't. I was afraid to share how I really felt. I was afraid to share when something bothered me and to, to communicate that and really get to the bottom what it is, whether it was just me, whether it was something from inner child being triggered, which there was a lot of that going on the last few months anyway, uh, of a lot of inner child stuff being triggered, of not being validated, feeling like love was going to take away, being hurt, all this stuff. I mean, it was just like down dumped on me going through the healing process and here i am going i've fucking done so much healing to get up to this point what the fuck is this coming up again for which if you've done any amount of healing and inner work and shadow work I, I say that many times but i know better i know that's like you're going to go through layers of that the deeper you go the more it's going to come up the more you're going to be challenged the triggers are here to, to tell us what's ready to be healed anyway i'm going off on this tangent but she said it to me she was like well it seems like you're you're you, you walk on eggshells. And I was like, no, I don't think so. So then I'm, I'm later on, I'm reflecting on it and it hit me. The awareness came to me and I was like, oh my God, that's exactly what I did with my dad. I mean, you couldn't fart a certain way and my dad would get pissed off. I was constantly changing who I was, not saying what I wanted, not saying what I needed and not asking for what I wanted. Because I was afraid of upsetting him. Because he was so angry all the time. I mean, this is a guy who used to joke around. It was like he had a frown on his face almost all the time. Unless we were his friends or he was drinking or we were, we were around family. He was good. 
and I'm not saying this to 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 like just bash on my dad and blame my dad. I'm not because I've done so much work and I've seen the suffering that he went through. And as I'm breaking all these generational cycles, I'm going, oh my gosh, my dad held on to that shit for whole, his whole life. But anyway, like especially if my mom asked me to, like if I asked my mom, hey mom, can I go do this? She'd go, go ask your dad. I'd be like, oh no, I'm, I'm not going because it's not going to happen. And then there was times where I would get the courage up if I'm like, I really want to do this. So I would get the courage up and ask my dad. He'd be sitting there in his chair. I still see this. He'd be sitting in his chair or on the couch and just recline back and and he's be watching TV and I'm like right there and I'm like, dad, can I go do this thing? And he wouldn't answer. And I'd wait a minute, fear starting to build up, nervous anxiety building up. So I'd ask again. Now my courage is going away, but I, I, I'm gonna ask again, dad, can, can, can I go do this thing? And like the third time, it was like he would get so fucking pissed off because he didn't want to be bothered. It's like, will you just fucking answer me? <laughs> and then I would be okay. But he would get fucking pissed off, scream, yell, get the fuck out of here, or just fucking go. I mean, that, I mean, it was just, and that was how it was. And, and then there were times like he would fucking scream and yell at you. He would hit you, all these different types of things. So it got to the point where I would change who I was. And there's at one point, it's like, well, fuck, love's being taken away. This is how he's going to react to me. I'm responsible for him. I want to keep the peace with him. So I'm going to change who I am. And I'm going to change what I say. I'm going to change how I say things. I'm not going to speak how I feel. I'm not going to ask him. I'll ask my mom. If she tells me to ask my dad, well, then I won't fucking do it. Or I would sneak around, sneak out and do something. Uh, I would try to find some other way than to confront and ask my dad because it wasn't pretty. And he didn't know it, depending on the day, there were some days it did end up well. He was in a great mood and you're like, oh shit, he's whistling, he's, he's having a good time, I can ask him. And then that was a girl, but those far few in, me, in between that that would happen. So here I am going into all my relationships, not speaking what I want, not speaking how I feel, not speaking how, when I was upset. And there were other relationships where I was that way, but it was so unhealthy, it was abusive. Screaming and yelling, just like my dad would do. I hated that, but, but I would do that. Other relationships, I was more reserved. And the only way I could express how I felt is if I got fucking angry. That's the only way that I knew how to really express. Because at that point when I'm angry, I didn't give a fuck. I even did that with my dad as I became an adult myself. I would get fucking mad and I would yell back at him because I would get angry because then I wasn't scared. Of course, there is some fear behind anger, but I would get angry and fight mode because then I didn't give a shit and I express how I felt, but I was an asshole about it. And that was a defense mechanism that I built up instead of really just expressing it in a healthy way, but I never knew the healthy way of expressing my needs, expressing my voice, expressing my tooth, my, my tooth, <laughs> Ex expressing my truth. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> expressing my tooth, <laughs> expressing my truth. I never really fully expressed my truth. So as I was sitting with, with the, 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 the woman I was dating and, 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 sh and she was sharing that with me and I'm going, no, no, no. And then I realized, oh my God, I was when I became aware of where that was coming from and, and, and why it came from. And I got to the, to the root of why I was not sh showing up, not speaking how I felt, not be, be speaking, you know, being upset and speaking when I was triggered and communicating when I was triggered because I was afraid. I was afraid of how they would react. I was making myself responsible for, for her emotions, just like everybody else's. I want to be loved. I want to be seen, I want to be heard, I want to be approved, I want to be validated. And if I share how I feel, it's going to be taken away and the consequences aren't going to be pretty. That's that's how I felt. The same thing, it's like, oh, I can't do this too much. I could, I could put my toe in, share just a little bit, but I can't go any deeper because some things, nope, it's too much. And I held on to it. Creating all this disconnect within, this anxiety within, not really being myself. To an extent I was, because I had all these triggers, <laughs> the triggers of childhood. The thing is, is the people in our, in our lives can feel our energy and the energy affects their energy. 
Most of it's unconscious unless you're in a really spiritual awakening understanding that we know that our energy is going to affect them. And if they're done enough healing, they know that your energy is affecting them. This is why we get triggered by other people's energy the matches and triggering things that need to be healed in us. So this is how our reality is created in the first place. So I want to stop and ask you, as you were listening to that story, what parts resonated with you on, on your childhood? Where are you doing these people-pleasing child, inner child wound not speaking what you feel and being responsible for other people's emotions. F afraid of being rejected and having this validation taken away and having love taken away and being hurt just like you were as a kid. Where is that happening in, in your life? Where do you catch yourself doing that? Where are you on, on eggshells trying to keep the peace? But yet, by you trying to keep the peace with them, you actually aren't at peace. You are having this chaos with inside and you're in, you have no inner peace. There may be peace on the outside, but there is no peace on the inside. And that's what matters most is your inner peace, the peace on the inside. And so the more you practice speaking your truth, the more you practice sharing what you feel and, and, and sharing what your needs are, the more peace you become, the less attached you, you become to the other people. And the more that you give them the space to realize that if they react to you in a certain way, it's not about you in the first place. It's everything has to do with them and, and what is being triggered within them. It has nothing to do with you. You are not responsible for their emotions. You are not responsible for how they react to you. That's their fucking responsibility, not yours. You are responsible for your feelings, your emotions. That's it. Of course, there are those moments where you're responsible for your, your actions and your behaviors that may, may trigger them, but they're still responsible for their own emotions and feelings. You have that choice at that point if you did something that was, in a way, that affected them, your behavior that affected that. And you have a choice. You don't have to change it if you don't want to. That's not really what I'm trying to talk about here. I'm talking about sharing what the fuck you feel. Sharing when something bothers you. Sharing when something hurt you. Or there was a misunderstanding, a miscommunication, and you're sharing, communicate that with you, with your, your partner or your friends or whomever it is, family. And you share that. And by learning to do that, you build this effective communication and you bring more peace within and you bring a new level of the relationship of growth and evolution. And now they have the opportunity to grow, to heal, or to fall apart. But that's okay. If they do fall, fall away, they do go away, that's okay. That's what's meant to be. As much as that may suck at times, I know I felt that. Stay true to you. Communicate what you feel. I haven't been very good at doing that at all. And I'm sharing this message with you as I'm learning to be able to, to communicate more effectively, communicate what I feel, communicate my fears, communicate my deepest insecurities. Not from a victim standpoint, from an empowering standpoint, a healing standpoint. And allow them to either move in closer to you or allow them to fade away. And sometimes, especially with family, I noticed this with my own. At first, you may get some pushback. Stand firm. Stand firm. I had to do this with my dad before he passed. And it became more calm. And when he did react a certain way, I didn't let it get to me. Most of the time. There were some moments where I'm like, all right, I'm done with this. But I didn't take it personally because it was, it was his shit. And he was in a lot of pain and suffering because of his health issues that he created himself. And I let it go. And I would share it with him. Hey, you want to stay? No, I'm gone. I'm done. You, you drained me, Dad. I love you, but you drained me today where you're at, oh. And over time, the energy between us became more calm. He didn't change, I didn't try to change him. I'm not responsible for his healing. I'm not responsible for anybody else's healing. I'm responsible for my healings. The people in your life, they're responsible for their healing. You are not responsible for them at all. You want stronger relationships? You want to feel more freedom and peace? 
You want to feel more at home within yourself? And you want to shift to your reality on the outside? It starts within first. And when you do that, magic happens. Again, I would love to hear from you. What resonated? What part of the story? What part of the message resonated with you? Where the where, show me share some of the awarenesses you had on your own life of, of of trying to keep the peace, walking on eggshells, not be, really being able to be you. Express how you feel. Express your truth. Express your intentions and and, and your needs. But not having attachment to them, even meeting them. But having a choice. Is this worth staying? Do I want to stay with this if this is not what's going on with not met? Or putting boundaries in place and then enforcing those boundaries. I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd love to have help, guidance on this healing journey to learn how to heal, then I invite you to, to grab a session with me. Grab an intuitive energy healing or, or intuitive reading or both at the same time and, and get, some, get some guidance and, and let's shift to be more you. To manifest the life of your dreams that's exciting and fun by being you. By finding the peace, the freedom that you desire. And be able to laugh through life. I don't know how I can help you. Until next time, I'll see you on the next episode of the Laughing Through Life show.